open a new model in Abacus, rename it Contact Simulation. Create a new part named Plank, which is a 3D deformable solid extrusion. Set the approximate size to 20. Use the Create Lines Rectangle tool and the Add Dimension tool to sketch the part. Create another part called Curve Block, which is also a 3D deformable solid. Use the Create Circle Center and Perimeter tool to draw a circle which will form the top of the part. Use the Create Lines Rectangle tool to draw a rectangle that will form the lower half. Use the Auto Trim tool to trim out the parts of the circle and rectangle that are in the interior, leaving just the profile of the part. Create a third part called Rectangular Block also of type 3D deformable solid extrusion. Create the material AISI 1005 steel. Give it a mass density of 7800 kilograms per meter cubed. For its elastic properties, set the Young's modulus to 200 gigapascals and the Poisson's ratio to 0.29. Create another material aluminum 2024 T3. Set the mass density to 2770 kilograms per meter cubed. The Young's modulus is 73.1 gigapascals and the Poisson's ratio is 0.33. Create a solid homogeneous section called steel section. Assign it the steel material. Create another solid homogeneous section called aluminum section and assign it the aluminum material.
Assign the steel section to the curved block and the rectangular block and the aluminum section to the plank. It's time to assemble the parts. Create a dependent instance of the plank. Then create an instance of the curve block. By default, Abacus positions instances in the assembly at the same coordinates as the local coordinates of the part. Since both our parts were created at the origin, they overlap each other in the assembly. Hence check Auto Offset from Other Instances and Abacus will automatically move the new part instance to a suitable location. Let's create assembly constraints for these two part instances using the Create Constraint Face-to-Face -face tool. It might be hidden behind the Create Constraint Parallel Face tool. Abacus prompts you to select the planar face or datum plane of the instance that will be moved. Select the bottom face of the curve block. Abacus then prompts you to select the planar face or datum plane of the instance that will remain where it is. Click the bottom face of the plank. Abacus will display arrows on both faces. It will inform you that the instances will be constrained in such a way that the arrows point in the same direction, and will give you the option to flip it. Since the arrows for the correct faces are already pointing in the same direction, we can click OK. Set the distance between the two faces to 25 meters. This is the height of the curve block, hence the plank will lie on top of the curve block, or more accurately, on a plane tangent to the top of the curve block. Once again, use a face-to-face -face constraint to move the part instance along the x-axis and align the side face. Set the distance to 30. It turns out the positive axis lies in the direction of the arrows, and we have moved the curved instance 30 meters in the wrong direction. We should instead have set it to negative 30. So right-click on Face to Face 2 in the Position Constraints container in the Model Tree and choose Edit. Set the clearance to minus 30. This fixes the problem. Use face-to-face -face constraints a third time to finish aligning the parts. Instance the rectangular block into the assembly and once again use face-to-face -face constraints to position it in the assembly.
We shall now create the analysis steps. As discussed in the overview video, we will have three steps, initial, make contact, and apply force. The reason for having a separate step is because contact is a severely discontinuous nonlinearity. Changes in contact conditions lead to what are known as severe discontinuity iterations of the solver, as Abacus Standard attempts to establish the conditions of the contact surfaces. If contact is not fully established, the contact status may oscillate between open and closed, which is known as chattering. It is best to establish contact between the components in a reasonably smooth manner, avoiding large overclosures and rapid changes in contact pressure. And one way to do this is to include more steps in the analysis to move the components into contact before fully loading them. This makes setting up the model a little harder, but the solution will be much more efficient. The part instances that are in contact have been placed face to face in the assembly. There are two ways to establish the contact. The first is by applying a small force on one instance to bring it in contact with the other. The second option is to use a boundary condition to displace one part closer to another by a small amount to bring them in contact. We use the second option. Create the step called Make Contact. Set the type to Static General. The total time period of the step is set to 1. In the Incrementation tab, set the initial increment size to 0.1. This is because we are establishing contact in two regions at once, so the solver may have some difficulty setting the contact state. We turn on NLGEOM to include the effects of geometric nonlinearity. Create a second static general step called Apply Force. Once again, set the total step time period to 1 and the initial time to 0.1 in the incrementation tab. Since the simulation is quite nonlinear and a large step size would result in many unsuccessful iterations and cutbacks. Next come the boundary conditions. We will create five boundary conditions. They are fixed curve block, fixed plank end, fixed rectangular block, press plank curved, and press rect plank. Fixed curve block fixes the bottom of the curve block as if it is mounted on some other structure or positioned on the floor. Fixed plank end fixes one end of the plank, making it a cantilever that will bend around the curve block. Fixed rectangular block fixes one end of the rectangular block holding it in place so that one end of the plank remains held in position by it. Press plank curve displaces the plank downward by a distance of 0.2 meters to ensure that contact is established between the plank and the curve block. Press rectangular plank displaces the rectangular block downward by a distance of 0.21 meters to ensure that contact is established between the rectangular block and the plank. Let's go ahead and create these. We won't worry about associating them with the correct step at this point, as we will do that in the Boundary Condition Manager. For now, activate all the boundary conditions in the Make Contact step.
Now let's tell Abacus which steps these boundary conditions should be activated in. Right click on the BC's container in the model tree. Choose Manager. The press plank curved and press right plank become active during the make contact step, where they displace the parts closer together to establish contact. However, they must not be active in the apply for step, hence they should be deactivated using the deactivate button. We would like fix curve block to be active starting from the initial step or the make contact step. Both should work the same, but I prefer putting it in the initial step since in reality this constraint exists from the very beginning. The boundary condition will propagate to the remaining steps. We can use the move left button to move the boundary condition to the correct step. Fix plank end and fix rectangular block are required for the apply for step. Click the Dismiss button to close the Boundary Condition Manager.